Have you ever wondered who's behind the scenes of Bright Access? Well, today I have the great honor of visiting with one of the founders, Robin Seville, and his beautiful wife, the better half maybe, Robin? Probably. Nicole, <laughs> what are your aspirations as husband and wife for Bright Access? You know, I, I, I'd worked, I've worked in the wedding industry as a videographer since the early 90s and uh, met a lot of brides over the time, filmed a lot of videos, and then had the opportunity to, to uh, have this company and to grow this company. And uh, initially it was about helping brides find the wedding professionals they needed for their wedding and helping those professionals have, have, bring clients to them. But over the years, we're in our sixth year now, um, it, it's kind of evolved into not just helping the bride find what she needs to plan her wedding, but more importantly, to have a successful marriage. And, and I heard said once, actually we had on our TV show a few years ago, is a, a saying that said, there's no such thing as a perfect wedding, but by redefining your expectations, your wedding can be perfectly wonderful. And I think that's true for your marriage too. There's no such thing as a perfect marriage. Problems happen, challenges happen, but redefine your expectations and I think your marriage can be perfectly wonderful as well. So I, that's, that's part of our goal, I think, at Bright Access, is to help people have a perfectly wonderful marriage as well as a perfectly wonderful wedding. Ah, mm -hmm. very well. It's true when we get married, isn't it, Nicole and Robin, that we think, ah, you know what, our love is unique. You know, maybe we'll have some troubles, but it will be pretty smooth because we're so in love. Well, I think a lot of times we, um you know, you have those uh, rose-colored glasses on, and you figure, you know, maybe that's we a good thing. Initially, right? <laughs> I know sometimes <laughs> it is, but I think um, you know you have to realize that everybody's individual, and and oftentimes you know you come from different backgrounds, and um, you know when you spend that time together, uh, you discover things about each other, and you have to realize that uh, the bigger picture: why did you really want to marry this person? And sometimes we forget. Mm -hmm. You know, I, th I think of the top five causes of divorce, money, sex, children, time, and in-laws. You know, let's talk about some of those. What about money? How did you handle your money differences? A big one for couples getting married. Um, uh, stats show that money is a challenge in relationships. Mm -hmm. And to say that we haven't had disagreements on that or frustration on that wouldn't be accurate. And so I've needed to better understand her perspective. And, and I think she's tried to understand why certain things are important to me. And what I think is really true is we're, we're kind of both right on, mm -hmm. on a lot of things. I can nice. probably be more mm -hmm. frugal, and, and it's okay to have a good time, too. It's okay to go on a date mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. and spend a little bit of money eating dinner. I'm not saying a lot or anything, but it, there's a balance in there. And honestly, um, it's something we're still working on, I think. Always. I don't know that it'll ever stop, yeah. actually. With raising four kids, how do you have time to spend together? How do you make time? We do make time. Do you have any time. rituals you do? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important to me to spend time. Uh, Just you, with you, you, Yes, yeah. I, you love your kids. We love our children. And, and as parents, all parents say, is it's amazing how different one child is to another. Um, but for me, and, and the longer we, we're married and the older I get, the more I need time with Nicole. And, and that's kind of grown and developed for me. Yeah. Yeah. We've been married this summer 19 years, so not, not a couple years, but not 50 years. But... Uh, we, uh, at least once a week, we make an effort to go out together. And, and sometimes that's just a movie and dinner. Other times it's going for a walk on the trail that's by our home. Sometimes it's going for a walk on the trail and heading to Home Depot for half mm -hmm. an hour. But it's the time in the car you get to talk and, and hold hands and, and, and just be together. And to me, I, I need that. You know, that really leads into a subject matter, a delicate subject matter of, of sex. Couples have to realize that men and women are not the same. You know, women um, want um, romance, love, and everything, and that will usually turn into that more physical nature of sex. Whereas guys tend to want the sex, but have, but it's not that they don't want the other stuff, but, you know, sex leads to the other uh, romance, and for women, the romance leads to the sex. And so What's I think a couple to do? That's right. And yeah. I think yeah. for a lot of, um, you know, I know that for all the couples that we know, um, for, for men, number one complaint is either I don't get enough, or for women, it's, well, you know, he doesn't hold my hand, or he doesn't, you know, bring me flowers, or, or just say I love you. And, and I think if, if each one understood what the other one needs, 
then the other's needs will be met. You know. Uh, you yeah, know, I think that you both desire that intimate physical mm -hmm. part in the relationship. Generally speaking, both the husband and wife want that. Yeah. Like Nicole said, that I'm still trying to learn is that it, it go, it's much easier if you mm -hmm. do certain things. Mm -hmm. I, I've learned that it took me years to learn this, is that if you help clean up the dishes after <laughs> dinner or you help put the kids to bed, uh, things that are not that big of a deal. It really isn't. All of a sudden, your wife is less tired, less uh, frustrated, feels like she's appreciated and that you're part there. Yeah. And, you know, is that a motivating factor for a guy to get that intimate part? Of it? Well, if it is, fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I've learned that, that those things make well, a big sad. difference. I've heard it said that the best aphrodisiac is a man with a toilet brush in his hand, right? <laughs> How attractive that is. Yeah. Is there anything particular that I didn't ask you would like to say, your best advice to a couple getting married today? I think um, look at the bigger picture. Remember why, um, remember why you got married, what you loved about that person. I, I, think, uh, I, I think that marriage is better than, than, than I thought different in a lot of ways than I thought, harder in ways that I knew and realized, but better mm -hmm. at the same time. And when you're, when you're working at something together and you have a bigger view, and you know, where are we gonna be in five years from now in our relationship, or 20 years from now, or, or in a month from now? Where you're gonna be is what you decide today. And, and what you do or don't do will determine how your relationship is. And that's true for anything in life, education, work, or anything. But what do you want in five years from now and what are you doing today to, to help yourself get there? But it is better than I thought. I honestly, um, maybe this is just a, one guy's perspective, I don't know where I'd be without my wife. I'm not trying to make her cry, but she's blushing a little bit. But, but it's true. I feel like I'd be probably helpless in a lot of ways because she does so much for our kids and for me that uh, I am a better person um, than I would otherwise be, no question. And so I do believe in true love. I do believe that there's a person for, out there, for at least for me, and uh, everybody has different opinions on that. That's my opinion, and, and I, I love it. I like it a lot. It's a great yeah. opinion. I think for couples is, you know, look forward to life and yeah. um, look forward to your wedding. Um, but just remember that's, that's just the beginning you know, it, it's not the end all. Uh, once the cake is um, eaten and the dress is washed and stored away and the flowers are dried, um, you know, there, there's, there's nothing left but the memories of that day. And, but you need to use those, those memories to help carry you through. And I think, um, uh, you know, once the, the glory of the wedding day is over, you gotta look forward to a great life together, but you gotta make it got to work at making it great too. I mean, as far as uh, just the little things yeah. in life. I love that. Every day waking up going, what can I do today to make his life more worth living? Yeah. Her life more worth living. And then do it. And do it. Yeah. I think that sounds terrific. Yeah. So fun to see who's behind Bride Access. And again, we can see why it is so successful. And I don't think I could have said it better as Robin did that, you know, we, we wish you not necessarily a perfect marriage, but a perfectly wonderful marriage. I'm Dr. Liz Hale. This has been sponsored by StrongerMarriage.org and you're watching BrightAccess.com.